Steve McQueen, an American pop culture icon, owes his big break in film to a Japanese man named Akira Kurosawa. Steve McQueen starred in The Magnificent Seven, a remake of Akira Kurosawa's The Seven Samurai, set in the Old West. The Magnificent Seven was not the only Kurosawa picture to be adapted into a western. A Fistful of Dollars, starring Clint Eastwood, was based on Kurosawa's Yojimbo. If such iconic films are remakes, then their source material must be equally as iconic. Kurosawa is hailed as one of the world's most important filmmakers, a Japanese Stanley Kubrick or Steven Spielberg. Yet this Japanese man seems to have more influences and influence in the West. Kurosawa's relationship with the West seems to take an almost cyclic form when examined. Kurosawa became a very big fan of American director John Ford while in art school and Kurosawa took Western literary works and set them in Asia. Many Western directors, such as Francis Ford Coppola and Steven Spielberg, then became fans of Kurosawa in film school, and international directors took Kurosawa films and set them in the Old West. Akira Kurosawa's The Seventh Samurai was one of Kurosawa's takes on the Western. The movie would become his most loved both in Japan and around the world. I felt that it was one of the great westerns of all time, only it was made by the Japanese in the Japanese idiom. But the form and the whole design of it was an ideal western. Said Yul Brynner, star of The Magnificent Seven. Seven Samurai has been unofficially adapted countless other times, most notably inspiring Pixar's A Bug's Life. Another of the great westerns, A Fistful of Dollars, was inspired by Kurosawa's Yojimbo. However, Yojimbo was inspired by many of the great westerns. Donald Ritchie, one of the most famous Kurosawa scholars, notes the connections between Yojimbo and western movies in his book, The Films of Akira Kurosawa. The town is very much like one of those godforsaken places in the middle of nowhere, remembered from the films of Ford, of Sturges, from Bad Day at Black Rock, or High Noon. Toshiro Mifune, just like Alan Ladd or Gary Cooper, is the outsider who wanders in and then wanders out, as in Shane a picture extraordinarily popular in Japan. The townspeople are not worth saving, so the hero's actions become absurd, gratuitous, except that Mifune, unlike Cooper, is quite willing to take money. Sanjiro, the name of Mifune's character, roughly translating to 30-something, convinces both factions in the town that he can offer them protection from the other side. Sanjiro engineers a peace in the town by causing both sides to eliminate each other in a bloody showdown while he watches from a water tower and laughs. While in the town, Sanjiro meets some of the local characters, such as an undertaker who responds with glee when new corpses are made, an innkeeper who allows him to stay for free, and a family who he helps escape from the town and their debts to the mob by creating a diversion. The look of Yojimbo can be explained by Kurosawa's admiration of Western director John Ford. え、he had the kind of Western influences. Uh, and talking to him, he was extremely influenced by John Ford. And that, um, you know, having met John Ford and then met Kurosawa, uh, John Ford was very enamored with Kurosawa. So, it was, you know, it's a great kind of thing to see the same kind of influences going on in that generation that are going on in my generation at that time, and now I see in the younger generation. Given Yojimbo's influences, it is only appropriate that a fistful of dollars be made. In a fistful of dollars, the man of no name strolls into town on a mule, with only a poncho and a wide-brimmed hat. He immediately witnesses acts of brutality by the ruling gangs in the towns, the Rojos and the Baxters. Just as in Yojimbo, the town undertaker is very pleased that business is booming. Get three coffins ready. Uh -huh. Huh? Also as in Yojimbo, the man with no name befriends a local innkeeper. Joe, as the innkeeper calls him, offers his gunslinging services to both the Rojos and the Baxters and also ends up rescuing a family from the wretched town. By the end of the movie, 
The man with no name engineers a battle in which both sides are eliminated. The connections between Yojimbo and A Fistful of Dollars also extend to the courtroom. Because of how closely the movies resembled each other, Kurosawa sued Sergio Leone. In a letter to Sergio Leone, Kurosawa said, Signor Leone, I have just had the chance to see your film. It is a very fine film, but it is my film. Since Japan is a signatory of the Berne Convention on International Copyright, you must pay me. Leone reportedly ran around showing everybody he knew the letter, because Kurosawa had called his movie a very fine film. In an out-of-court settlement, Kurosawa received 15% of a fistful of dollars international revenues, with a guarantee of at least 100000 Yojimbo was remade once again in 1996, this time as a Prohibition-era gangster film, titled Last Man Standing and starring Bruce Willis. Yojimbo is often thought to be based on American author Dashiell Hammett's Red Harvest, although Kurosawa has only mentioned the book as an influence and did not pay the Hammett estate. Likewise, neither did the producers of Last Man Standing, and lawsuits were initiated on behalf of the Hammond estate, although they eventually disappeared. Kurosawa often adapted non-Japanese literature to an Asian setting. In 1957, Kurosawa released Throne of Blood, an adaptation of Shakespeare's Macbeth. Kurosawa turned to Shakespeare again in 1960 with The Bad Sleep Well, which parallels Hamlet, and perhaps most famously in 1985 with Ron, drawing from King Lear. Kurosawa also loved Russian literature. He adapted Dostoevsky's The Idiot into a film of the same name. He turned to Russia again for his film Ikiru, based on Leon Toisty's The Death of Ivan Ilyich, and The Lower Depths by Maxim Gorky. だ、そういうのを昔随分読んでたからね、そういうのは自然出てきてるんじゃないですか。それでもそんなあんな高さまで行ってないけどね。そのもちろん全然文学じゃなきゃ書けないですよ。あそこはね、そうても。でもなるべ